Hello and welcome to the second installment of our What's New in SolidWorks 2013 Lunch and Learns. My name is Franco Rotoli. I'm, I'm here with Lars Christensen. Thank you all for attending. If you haven't seen the part one of our What's New in SolidWorks 2013, it is up on our website. You can just go to the videos link and view it from there. Okay, let's get started. Let's jump into SolidWorks. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is configurations, what enhancements they've made in configurations in SOLIDWORKS 2013. If we jump over to SOLIDWORKS we see I have the cylinder assembly and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the configuration tree and we see that there's a design table associated with this assembly. If I edit the table in a new window, this is where we get into the what's new. Um, we see that the add rows and columns dialog box comes up front and center. If any of you have worked with configurations before, especially with design tables, you know that sometimes this, this dialog gets buried beneath Excel or buried beneath SOLIDWORKS and it makes uh, your design table unusable. Well now in SOLIDWORKS 2013 they minimize everything and this, table, this dialog box comes front and center so you can uh, add parameters from here or you can just click cancel. The next thing that's new is we see that Excel is now maximized in our window as well as the worksheet is maximized in our window. That makes just jumping into our design table that much faster. Next is, and this is the big enhancement to design tables in SOLIDWORKS 2013, we see that we, this design table is pointing to different configurations of different components. In previous versions, you would have to open up that component, write down all the configuration names and come back in here to Excel and type them in if you wanted to switch configuration names between different components in your assembly. Well now in SOLIDWORKS 2013 they've added what's called data validation. If I click on any one of these cells we can see that I get a, a drop down box. Well so what this is doing is it's reading the configuration data from this cylinder part and it's populating this list. That makes it very very handy. I no longer need to make sure that I know the configuration name exactly and I type it perfectly it's right here I just pick it from the list so we can see we have it for that we have it for this component as well as well as resolved and suppressed okay so I no longer have to type in resolve or suppress or SNR I can just pick them from the list of course you can always type in here as well as long as it meets the proper criteria so let's go ahead and create a new configuration I'm just gonna copy this row into here and we're going to make a 4 inch cylinder here and we're going to add the clevis so I'm just going to change that to resolved we now close out of Excel and jump back into SOLIDWORKS and you can see the configuration gets created I didn't have to look into my any one of those components I was just very quickly able to add the configuration to this assembly. I double click it and it shows up right there. The next thing we're going to look at is this rod on the inside. If I open that up in its own window, we can see that this rod has a bunch of different configurations as well as its own design table. If I edit the table in a new window, again the same behavior presents itself and I can see that the rod again has many many different configurations. For those of you who use design tables quite a bit, you may notice um, something new in our design table, materials. Materials are now configurable in your design table. And the beauty of it is they do have data validation with your material favorites. So if you set up your material favorites to the five or six materials that you use most commonly, it'll automatically populate in here. So you can automatically pick it. So if I change this smallest configuration to copper, for example, Obviously it changes there. I close out of Excel and jump into that configuration, which is this one. We can see that the material, the color change, the appearance change. If I go back to my tree, we can see that uh, the material has been changed to copper as well. Now, speaking of configurations and different, uh, this one has a lot of configurations. We all know, if you've worked with configurations before, you know that when your parts have a lot of configurations up, you know, up past 10 or 12, it, it starts to bog down your parts. Your parts get uh, very large and rebuild times take a long time. 
Well, in SOLIDWORKS 2013, they've done some, some enhancements to address this issue. You can see that in our uh, configuration tree, there's two symbols in front of the configuration name. There's a check mark and a minus sign. What this means is uh, the check mark ones are loaded into memory. And you can see as I double click each one of these, they each get check marks. So switching back and forth between these configurations is very, very fast. This is not a, a complex part, so it doesn't take a ton of time to load anyway. But if it did, if I switch back and forth between the check configurations, it would be much, much faster. More importantly, I can also unload all these configurations. So if I right click the top level icon in this case, I can choose to rebuild save mark. And what this does is it adds a mark for, let's say, uh, this configuration, for example. If I right click, add rebuild save mark, it, adds, it changes the icon to a little uh, floppy disk. And what it'll do is when you save this model, it will load this configuration into the model data. So if you find yourself always working between a handful of different configurations and the other ones are just auxiliary configurations, maybe you would save those and it would save you time on loading any one of those configurations. You can also right click the top icon and rebuild save mark for all configurations. When you do that, you get a little pop up over here in the upper right hand corner. It says saving all configurations might increase the file size and save time. That is because it's loading all that configuration data into the file. It's going to bloat your file. Uh, this is basically how SOLIDWORKS pre-2013 worked. Okay, so you right-click the top icon, rebuild, save mark, and you can remove the mark and purge the data for all configurations. So you can see all the configurations now have a minus sign except for the one that's active. Okay, so again, if I save this file, it's going to be very, it's going to be small in comparison to if I had all the configurations active. They've also in tools options under performance, we have purge cache configuration data. When you have this checked, then every time you save the model, it's going to purge all that data. So again, that's just a check mark for that. Um, to read what more on this, go to the help and what's new. Uh, again, in this form, we don't have a ton of time to to really dig into that. But please, uh, this is great functionality that they've added in SOLIDWORKS 2013 to really help people that, are, that have a lot of configurations and a lot of configuration data and are switching back and forth between those configurations. Okay, let's jump into the next topic, which is sheet metal. They've, uh, they've made a bunch of new enhancements to sheet metal over the past few years, and this year they've, they've really done some good things with... Um, with drawings, with sheet metal drawings. Lars is going to talk about drawings in, in the part three of this three-part series, so I'm not going to take too much uh, bang from his presentation, but let's, uh, let's jump back over to SolidWorks and open up a sheet metal part. All right, we see here this is a multi-body sheet metal part, and I'm going to hide some components or some of the bodies. We'll hide just that one. You can see if I look at my feature tree, if any of you work with sheet metal, then you know that a few years ago, I believe in 2008, 2009, they added multi, they had um, support for multi-body sheet metal parts. Well, in SOLIDWORKS 2013, they've consolidated the tree. So now all your sheet metal features go under the sheet metal folder. All your flat patterns go under the flat pattern folder. In earlier versions, they could get scattered throughout your tree, and it kind of made them difficult to look for. Well, now in SOLIDWORKS 2013, it's organized a little bit better. The next thing I'm going to show you has to do with forming tools. In SOLIDWORKS 2013, they've enhanced how our forming tools work with our sheet metal parts. If I browse to louvers here, let me open this louver and show you uh, what, one of the enhancements that they've, that they've made. If I right click the form tool feature and edit, I have a tab up here for my insertion point. What this is is basically just a little point that you add to your forming tool and you can use this in positioning in your sheet metal part. So if I jump back to the power supply here and drag this out, now I have a tab up here in my forming tool feature for position. Now basically this works just like Hole Wizard. I grab the point tool and I can very easily drop many louvers all at once. 
And again, I can add uh, dimensions and relations, things like that, very quickly and very easily. Okay. I can also change configurations here. If I had any configurations of this forming tool, I can choose to link to forming tool. All the same functionality, but now I have those insertion points, which makes it very, very easy to insert these, like so. Again, all the same functionality. I could flip it if I needed to, um, but now I have an insertion point, which is very, very nice. and makes it very quick to add multiple forming tools. Let's jump over to the drawing of this component. And we can see here we have a flat pattern and an isometric view. Bend notes have been around for a while. And in SOLIDWORKS 2013, they've redesigned how the bend notes work and how they're edited. Now if I select on the view, I have an option for bend notes right here in the property manager. And at this point, I can choose to modify them all. I can turn them all on or turn off. So if I delete in here, it works just like a dimension does. And I can add the bend direction, the bend angle, the bend radius. I can type in here. So for before bend radius, I can type space R. I can do all that good stuff all at once. I don't have to modify all these notes individually. I can also choose to, one of the new functionalities is if I control select two notes that are on the same bend line, I can right click and I can merge my bend notes. So it significantly declutters my drawing view. Let's go in and make a bend table here real quick. I'm going to select this view. Add a bend table and I'm just going to select here. I can choose uh, either alpha or numeric works like every other table in SOLIDWORKS. We say OK. And you can see here the, the bends get replaced by letters and all the bend information gets put over here. Now, uh, something new that they've added in SOLIDWORKS 2013, if I add a row, or excuse me, a column to the right, they've added some new custom properties that get automatically created. I can put in things like complementary angle, bend order, bend allowance, uh, bend direction, which is already in there. I can also tag my bends, and I can put in what the tag is on each one of these bends. In this case, the only tag is the note, uh, letter. So they've added all these uh, new custom properties to these bends and they do get added at the part level in the bend feature. It just gives your table that much more information to get populated with. So they've done a really good job with, uh, with sheet metal, especially on the drawing end this year in SOLIDWORKS 2013. Okay, I'm going to now pass the presentation over to Lars. He's going to talk about design library and weldments. All right, so uh, we're going to look here on uh, a couple of things here, design libraries and uh, weldment. So I kind of like stuff these into to kind of like one part file here. So uh, let me uh, jump over to SOLIDWORKS because that's where the fun really is, right? Um, first of all, design libraries. I don't know how many people are using design libraries. It's, it's residing right over here to the right over here. Click here. I'm just going to thumbtack it so it stays. So the design library in SOLIDWORKS, it comes with all different kinds of stuff in here. So if you haven't checked it out, you definitely should. Um, you can store standard parts over here, but also these library features that kind of like have some intelligence to it. There's forming tools for sheet metals. There's mold tools. Uh, there's different things in here. New for 2013 is that we can now insert multi-body parts in here. So multi-body library features now exist in 2013. But it's a really, really neat uh, enhancement in there. So I got this table here and uh, I need to insert a leveling foot in here. So what I'm going to do is uh, these multi-library features works just like standard uh, library features does. You drag them on, you drag them on to a, uh, to a face here. I might have to get a little bit closer just so we can see what we're doing, right? So I'm going to select it here on a face and then it's looking for uh, some reference edges. So I'm going to go in here and select my my different reference edges here. There's one edge, select another edge here. Um, and this is all dependent on how your library feature is set up. Um, you can see how over to, to the left over here in the property manager um, that this for multi-body 
library features works identical to standard library features. You can have different configurations. You can override values and stuff like that. So new for 2013, multi-body library features is now uh, an option. What is what is really neat? Uh, I'm going to continue working with this model here. So I need three more in here. Um, I could, of course, use uh, just insert three more. I'm going to use one of my favorite uh, tools, what is sketch driven patterns, not new. Um, I got a point sitting in the center of each of these, right? So now I can actually go in here and use uh, a sketch driven pattern that's not new. So that's my sketch. It's not going to be a feature, it's actually going to be a body, right? This is a multi body part there, and that looks good there. So that is really neat that, um, that we can now insert these multi multi library body library features in there now this part here is a weldment so we have uh, over here we have a cut list right now if i go ahead here and we look on the plus side we'll see here's our four leveling feet uh, i can now right click and hit update and then they all get inside of a cut list folder uh, so now SolidWorks can keep track of, of, of the identical parts now if i hit rebuild here we will see that that also gets added onto this table that this table here can also of course be displayed on 2d drawings and stuff like that one thing we don't have is we don't have a description now new for 2013 is a 3d boundary box but the way that works is if i right click here and say that I want to um, create a boundary box. Uh, it what SolidWorks does now is it creates a 3D uh, uh, sketch box around our feet, and will then put that information inside in the properties. Now, what that means is that we get into the properties. That means we can actually also by hitting rebuild, bring it right into our description. So that is really really neat. Now. This 3D boundary box, I personally think that there's a lot of different ways we can use this. So I'm not a, a really a weldment specialist, but I use uh, a lot of machining and, and, and stuff like that, tool design, and I see that this boundary box could be used for things like that. So let me just quickly just get off a tag in here. I'm opening up a part and just show you what this 3D boundary box also could be used to. So I got a part here. Um, and, and many times in machining, and, and, and uh, we got to order uh, stock, right? So we can actually use that boundary box for stuff like that. So if I go into the weldments tab, now it's going to become a weldment when I hit this. But all a weldment really means is that it's just going to insert a cut list. Uh, it's not going to do anything to our model in any other way. If I right click here and say update, now it's going to put it into a, this one part into a folder. And if I now say I want to create a boundary box, SolidWorks is now giving me a 3D boundary box around this part that is the minimum stock size I need. And if I go in now to my scats and insert a couple of reference dimensions, you will actually see that this is a very quick way to find out what the smallest amount of stock to create to order to create this part is. I will also add that if we went in and they made any changes to this part, that boundary box would update. So really, really need uh, this boundary box in there. That's my favorite use for it. Uh, but like I said, you can bring it right into your to your weldment uh, tables too and stuff like that. So some really neat, really neat stuff here on uh, the design library uh, that we can now do multi-body parts and also on the weldments that we now can go in and, and create those. So I think that that is, is really, really neat stuff. All right. Next, we're going to talk about assemblies. So every year, SolidWorks is always, uh, you know, enhancing things with uh, assemblies, and and this year is definitely uh, not um, not different. They have definitely come up with some really really neat things in assemblies. So uh, again, SolidWorks is where we like to be. So let's go in there. I'm just going to get rid of a couple of files here. We don't need this one anymore. We don't need this one. Now, Franco was touching on this uh, the, on a previous webinar. If we go in and uh, we go into a file here, if we look in this file here, I got, I think, about over 300 different components inside this folder. Uh, now, Franco was talking about the quick fill. So in here, we can say we just want to look for parts, right? We could also say we wanted to look for assemblies, and you will see all my different assemblies in here. Now, my favorite new one for 2013 is this top level assemblies. So what SolidWorks does, and you know, you almost think that there should be a little bit magic, is the SolidWorks actually goes in here, looks at our entire assembly and filter out what it can see is being referenced and thereby must be 
the um, uh, sub assemblies and it gives us the main assembly here I'm gonna go ahead and open up this assembly so we can take a look at it so this assembly here is a pretty neat little uh, device here um, we can see that that we have some different things in here now on this part here what I am really going to work on on this part is this portion of the build. It is this little wagon here, cart here. Um, now, but if we look at this part, we see that there's this track in here. We do that a lot in, in when we're working with assemblies. We bring in reference sub-assemblies, right? Just to kind of like display what is going on and stuff like that. But as we can see that with the new function in, in SOLIDWORKS that Franco earlier talked about, center of mass, is now kind of like displaying wrong for me uh, because this track here is really just reference, but it's taking into consideration, right? If I go over here and I go into mass properties, we will see that I have like over 5,000 kilograms in here for weight. Um, new for 2013 is we can actually go into this sub-assembly of this track and if we go over to the properties tab if I can click on it and go over to it component properties we can now turn this sub-assembly into an envelope now I don't know how many people have used envelopes in the past I sure didn't uh, but with this new feature in 2013 I am gonna start using it because now SOLIDWORKS knows that this whole sub-assembly is just for reference and you will see that it changes colors and also that my center of mass just moved up to actually what I'm working on in my assembly so that is right underneath the component properties you can go and you can turn a sub assembly into an envelope if I go into mass properties we will now see that our mass have uh, have, is down to what we would expect with the part we're working on. On top of that, if I go in and open up a drawing, I have a drawing of this part. I don't know how many knows this. This is not new. Right click up on top of the tree and say open drawing. It's actually going to open up the drawing. But since this track is now an envelope, SOLIDWORKS is actually not taken into consideration when we come to a drawing. So it's not even showing up because we just had it in there as a reference. That's pretty neat, right? Of course, this is SOLIDWORKS, so of course we can turn it on. If I right-click in the drawing view and I go into properties, I can choose to show the envelope. So I can show it if I want to. But by default, it's not going to show because SOLIDWORKS, again, knows that this is just for reference. So some really neat, um, really neat enhancement, I think, that they have added this envelope in there. All right. <clears throat> like I said, SOLIDWORKS always does uh, a, a lot of great work when it comes to, to assembly enhancements, so uh, there's of course more. So let me just go in here. So in here, I got um, a sub-assembly in here of this entire side little rack here. Now new for 2013 is I can actually go in here and I can actually now delete parts out of a sub-assembly directly from my main assembly. So if I go in here and I select a couple of different components here and I hit delete on my keyboard, what would happen in the past when I say yes to all? It would delete the entire sub-assembly. But new for 2013, that's not how it's gonna react anymore. It's actually gonna go in and delete these specific components within the sub-assembly without completely, you know, uh, dissolve the, the old or delete the, the old sub assembly. What used to happen in the past, you did this, the whole sub assembly went away, and now you want to hunt to try to find out what sub assembly that actually was, right? Um, also, what is new in 2013, which is really neat, now where we have this sub assembly, if I right click on any part of this sub assembly, I can go in and say here and say select sub assembly. And SOLIDWORKS is actually going to show me a little tree of, you know, where it's coming from, from the main assembly. And I can, from here, what is really neat, I can actually go in and open up that sub-assembly. So again, you don't have to hunt through the tree and stuff like that. So really neat that we can now do the envelope, that we can delete components out of a sub-assembly without, uh, from the main assembly without delete the entire sub-assembly. Um, and that we have a quick way now to open up sub-assemblies. Another thing that is really, really neat, I think this is probably one of my favorite for 2013, is now I have this part here. i got to reinsert some components in here. Um, and now in 2013, we can actually go in here, insert components. This is not new, right? Browse. This is not new. But check this out. I can now control select multiple components. And when I insert it, I can actually insert them one by one. They will actually come in 
uh, right to place and uh, you can insert those there so I think that that is huge for 2013 that you can actually now control select multiple components to insert in the past we used to go up again and insert the next one insert the next one insert the next one now you can control select so that is that is huge and I do notice that that one is not sitting where I was supposed to I'm just gonna move on though um, so in this case here um, another thing that is new is we it's not new that we can right click and replace components but what is new for 2013 is we can now browse out and we can now insert or replace components in components that is in another folder but with the same file name so that is pretty huge right so we can replace components now that is residing in another folder with the same part name in the past, we used to do a, you know, underscore one, underscore two, underscore three, if we wanted to see the different ones. But now for 2013, we can actually replace components sitting in another folder with the identical name as the one we're replacing. That's neat. Last thing I want to show here on assemblies is also, if we're looking at this sub-assembly, we can see that it's referencing all different uh, kinds of uh, uh, places now new for 2013 if I right click on the top of this sub assembly and go into list external references I can now break all the external references right from here so that's definitely gonna be a huge time saver for a lot of people who's doing this in content uh, referencing that we can now just in a sub assembly just purchase all right from there so I really like that so some really good stuff I think with assemblies in 20 uh, 13 that definitely is going to help uh, speeding up uh, the design so that that is really really neat here all right uh, let's get out of this here um, I got one other thing that I'm going to show here so let me uh, let me just get out of this gonna open up this mounting mountain board here so SolidWorks, when it comes to assembly, is always working on trying to, you know, make things go quicker and speed things up. So I just want to show you here a new enhancement too. So if I go in here and I take this binding here and I'm just going to include some hardware with it, this is not new. We can go in, we can do a mirror component that have, uh, that have, have happened before, right? Um, if I go in here and uh, I do this over, I'm going to select the right plane here. I'm going to mirror this part over that. Um, and in here we can make the opposite hand of it, right? Uh, pretty neat stuff. This is not new either. But what is new in here now is that in 2013, we can actually now include all this information here when we do a mirrored component in assembly. So we just quickly look. I mean, there's solid bodies, there's axes, there's planes, but also look at stuff like custom properties can be brought in here, whole data and stuff like that. So this is really neat that SOLIDWORKS brings um, all this information with it uh, when you do uh, these mirror components. So as you will see here, um, we got the, the other thing here. If we go in and let me just, I can even go in here and uh, let me open it up here, uh, this mirror component. You will see that it actually comes in here uh, fully uh, made it and everything right I mean it's, it's fully you know six degrees of freedom is completely uh, taken out of it here so it brought all that stuff with it and uh, and even if I go in here and open up this part by itself now remember this is a mirrored uh, component we go in here and look in the feature tree you will see that we got you know the solid body we even got the axis and the planes and the sketches in here so so that is really really neat what they have done uh, what they have done with that, I think. So, so really neat enhancement uh, with the, the mirror component. All right. Last thing I also wanted to show in here too that is new for 2013. If we go over and look at my configurations over here, you will see that I actually have an exploded view in here of, of this part. Uh, that is, of course, not new, right? But what is new in 2013 is that now we can actually add multiple exploded views within one configuration. So in the past, we had had to, if we had to make another configuration, we would actually have to go and, uh, um, another exploded view, sorry, we would actually have to go and and uh, and create another configuration but now in 2013 we can actually now have multiple 
um, uh, exploded views within one configuration. So that is definitely, uh, definitely uh, very, very cool. Let me just get out of this. All right. So some really neat things, I think, in, uh, in SolidWorks when it comes to assemblies. They've definitely done a very good job there getting some of these new, new things in there. All right, to, uh, to wrap up this webinar, I just got one more thing in here. It's a little quick one. It's pretty neat stuff, though, uh, piping and tubing. So uh, let's jump back into SolidWorks. Like I said, that's where we have fun. Uh, so I got this, uh, this little uh, plant here. I don't know. Uh, it got to be a beer plant, a whiskey plant, or something like that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my routing add-on on here. And just going to show you a couple of very neat functions that SolidWorks have added uh, to that. So if I go in here, we got this pipe coming out here. New for 2013, if I go in and say edit route, and I click on the route here, you will actually see that I can now add a slope. Now it works pretty easy, like anything in SolidWorks, start from the top, work your way down. It's looking for a gravity plane. I'm just going to select the bottom floor here and a starting point. I'm just going to select this end point here. And you will see automatically it adds uh, the preview of the slope, we can change the angle here. Now, when I hit the green check mark, SolidWorks X is going to go in and add that slope. Now, yeah, this will become a custom elbow, of course. Uh, that is obvious. But, uh, you know, very quickly you can go in and create these bends and angles and stuff like that. I think that is pretty neat how quickly you can do that. Another thing that is new for piping and tubing. Uh, this is really neat too, is if I go in here, again, go in and edit route, they have added a new auto route function in here. So a new auto route fu function called route along geometry. So if I check that, um, we will offset our routes uh, five millimeters, you, of course, this is whatever you want, uh, from a certain phase we're selecting. So if I go in here, I got a starting route here, and I go in and select this endpoint right here and select the flaw, you will see that it creates a route that goes five millimeters away from the flaw. I can now continue that route by selecting the wall, and you will now see how the route goes five millimeters from the flaw, five millimeters from the wall. I can even come over here and right click and hit clear selection and start a completely other route for this over on this end of the tube over here and you will see that now it's going to add a route down to the floor here and I can now just continue this route by hitting the wall now it's going to route over there hit the other wall and then hit my endpoint for my first started route and I have now without you know zooming around roaming around and now inserted a route that stays five millimeters away from the floor and the surrounding walls and we can now make sure that our you know whiskey mall can transfer from one cylinder to the other so that is really um, that's a really neat function you know you don't have to zoom around roam around and all that kind of stuff the last thing I want to show with piping and tubing is also that SOLIDWORKS have enhanced if you're doing uh, these kinds of cabinets with these kind of different kinds of routes like this, that SolidWorks actually enhanced the way they work with um, a B and I D functions. So you can import XML sheets into SolidWorks. So I have an XML file out here that contains all the different tubing information and stuff like that. We can see that here. And when I open it up, bring it into SolidWorks, it's actually going to give us all the different manifolds, tubing systems, and stuff like that that you can quickly insert in here. So if you're using another software uh, to, to, to lay these things out, uh, you can now import them in XML files into to SolidWorks. So some really neat things that they kind of like added in here uh, for, the, for, the different, for the different ones. So again, uh, really neat. Uh, really nice stuff when it comes to uh, to some of the enhancements uh, that they have added in here. That's about uh, what uh, Frank and I had uh, planned on sharing today in this uh, webinar here. Hope that you definitely got some uh, some good new functions out of it. Um, we do have a one more uh, webinar coming up where Frank is going to talk a little bit about Photo 360. We're going to talk about some drawings and detailing, uh, some exciting stuff. Uh, Franco and I will be uh, sitting by here. If you um, use the chat uh, window over to, to the right in the go to meeting window, uh, we will be sitting here. Any questions or any comments, um, please, um, we will definitely get back to you on those. 
Also, of course, you're more than welcome to call any of our offices where we all have a sitting. Uh, more than happy to, uh, happy to help you with anything. So I hope you guys got something out of this. I hope you guys all have a, a great day. And, and Frank goes on our behalf. Thank you so much.